there are lots of people who can glue boats, but there are not so many who can sing your songs. Oh, there's lots of young people coming along who can sing my songs, thousands of them. Uh, they're not as experienced as I am yet, but they will be. Pete, I'd like to ask you a question involving culture. Because uh, a lot of the people in this room are political, they're involved with Swedish culture, they talk about culture imperialism, they talk about culture politics. Well, the fact is that in this country, in this room, there's a bunch of people working for Swedish radio that are working with, with political groups that are fighting cultural imperialism and things like that. And these people in this very room accept the fact that Swedish music is not allowed on Swedish radio between midnight and 4.30 in the morning. Oh, that's horrible. Why is that? Ask them. Oh, it costs more money? Oh, yes. You have yeah. to pay a bigger percentage to the composer? Yeah, and the much more. See, they've saved money by sending uh, it to America instead of keeping it here. Well, the solution then is to raise the cost of the American music uh, and tax the American music so high that uh, it will be the same cost. Don't lower the price of Swedish music, but raise the cost of America. Every country needs a cultural uh, tariff on incoming culture. Uh, sometimes uh, you're luckier than you think. You have a language barrier in, uh, in the case of movies, so there are Swedish movies made. But Australia, which has the same population as Sweden, has no movie industry because there's no language barrier to keep it out. I told Australians they should have a, a tariff on every piece of incoming culture to Australia and use that extra money to support their own culture. So maybe yeah, that, that's what you should, must I'm, do I'm, here. I'm living in Sweden now. These people don't even scream. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> I mean, they're just saying, well, uh, there's nothing we can do. I mean, uh, we're paralyzed. We're sick. You know, we're hopeless. Well, we're dead. Here's how but look, nobody in the room is saying anything. How about... Uh, and they're all political, I'm telling you. They, they swear to me privately behind... The, the problem of political. all motion, of moving things, you know, is to find leverage. If you want to move a stone, you have to get a crowbar and get a fulcrum somewhere with another stone and you start prying. You can't move it very far, but you get the point of that crowbar in and start moving. So we need a, a little wedge, a little leverage here. How would it be to take a collection right here and now in this room to pay the extra money for, say, five minutes of Swedish music? I want to say to Tobe that he should send the 300 kroner to Swedish radio so they can play 12 minutes of his music on the radio. I think you know, the same thing. Well, I'm going to start doing this to other composers. Yes, take little collections around. But I, but I think the people in this room, or those people that should do something about it also, the people that write for the newspapers, the people that work for Swedish radio. And I think you should ask them what they're doing. Um, what, what they, you know why, what? They, why they accept this situation. Well, one reason the people in this room are not more alarmed, perhaps, now to correct me if I'm wrong, is that like many intellectuals, uh, since the whole world is at our disposal, intellectuals don't tend to feel the loss of their home quite so much. Uh, a physicist once said, oh, he says, all oh, us scientists, we're just gypsies. Uh, we can go from one university to another. We're n uh, we never lack for a home. And I realized this is true of my own parents. My parents, whom I love very much, they could live in California, or New York, or for that matter, London or Tokyo, as long as they had congenial musicians to talk to. They were home. But, uh, for this very reason, this is one reason that ordinary people often mistrust intellectuals. Ah, they say, these intellectuals, they, they love the world so much, these cosmopolitans, they don't love this home enough. And so, when an election come along, it's a rare thing that an intellectual gets elected to an office in the States, I don't know about here, because the average person does mistrust intellectuals, because the intellectual doesn't need them. The intellectual is, has enough education, has enough money perhaps, but if even without the money has the education, so the whole world is their home. And uh, so you're not outraged as much as you should be perhaps. Uh, at the fact that Swedish music is not played for these four very important hours. Sometimes some people think they're the most important hours of the 24, <laughs> between 12 and 4. 4.30. And 4.30. <laughs>
But you're right, we should It's just interesting that not one Swedish person has made any suggestions or offers or said anything about it. Well, yes, I did. Oh, oh I'm sorry, I did, Yes, I did once. Sorry. I, uh, or twice I did, uh, two hours from 12 to 2 o'clock in the, in the midnight. I was writing up everything they were saying was played, and there were four Swedish uh, awesome. produced things. And I didn't uh, call the radio, but I asked people who, who were uh, knowing about that things, and they just told me that it is a question of steam, that uh, it is cheaper to play uh, music right. where they have not an agreement to uh, yeah, that kind of organization. And uh, I didn't know how, what to do about it, and uh, you know, uh, so it, I, mean, I think it's very like human to do like that because because you are so involved in that thing, yeah, you are stuck in it. If you don't do anything yourself. about it, it's like committing suicide. Well, it's not it means interesting. That that it's not anything done about it because we have been fighting. I mean, this is a, a bigger problem that has to do with that uh, Swedish music and especially Swedish political music is played very little on the radio. Any any time of the of the day or the night, and and uh, they are um, firing people that work on the on the youth, on the youth uh, blocks, uh, and we have been fighting against this and, and organizing demonstrations and festivals. And right now we're organizing a big uh, uh, organization against the the U international European song festival. That's going to be held right here in Sweden next year. So we are. But if you compare with it in the last 15 years, 15 years ago it was Swedish music or Anglo American <coughs> music. Now it is a little better because people, pressure groups, has been there. And now they are playing Polish, Czech, Czechoslovakian music. <laughs> And uh, uh, South America. I mean, the, the word has exactly come came more into Sweden now. But, oh, but I, I mean, mean that is the, as a comparison. It's still on the books that I called up Swedish radio and I spoke to eight or nine different people, mm -hmm. and four or five of them said it's not forbidden. It's just that uh, Cheap. it's cheaper. Che yes. And then, but sure. but two or three finally said yes, it is forbidden basically. Or we play <coughs> music from Visalanda. Uh, I asked him which land, you know, which lands, and he didn't know. You know. Uh, what I mean is that that situation should not, period, not be allowed to exist. That's all. That's true. But it, it and I think that it means that the people are not working together. Everyone has to work together. <laughs> I mean, the spellmen, the political singers, the, the, the. But they are. They are right now. Well, because yeah, like because to, well, in I'm not this aware organization of so much, against the. the the song festival, <coughs> the commercial song festival, they, they have, all these organizations are, are into it. People that are playing classical music and folk music and political music and all, they don't know about it. It's but it's, it's true that there's been very little outrage in, in the papers about it, like, or like the uh, music unions hasn't said anything about it. And even uh, um, Rick's concert, one of the, one of the people there, they, he didn't even believe it. It was true. It was just a few weeks, yeah. You know, Izzy, this is true in the States also, that there are lousy things uh, about American television and radio, but intellectuals are not really up in arms about it. Why? They don't need it. They have their hi-fi. They can listen to whatever they want to. They have their books. We have our books. We can read whatever we want to. So we don't need to worry about what the masses uh, don't have. Uh, and some intellectuals are, are very frank. They say, well, if anybody is so stupid as to have to depend on the mass media, they deserve what they get. Uh, to me, this is immoral. This is like a rich man saying, I don't care how dirty the river is, I've got a swimming pool. I can swim in my, my, my pool. If the people have a dirty river, it's their own damn fault. And uh, I'm trying in the States to try and persuade people to make a, a major battle uh, out of improving American television. But person after person, why worry about television? Only, only stupid people listen to it. And there's enough truth in what they say, an awful lot of 
uh, people are trapped by it and don't know any better. Uh, so I've made very little headway. Uh, there's a so-called Citizens Committee uh, for television and broadcasting, but it's almost a phony. It gets so little done. And a few people like Nicholas Johnson, you know, out there try and do something about it, but average, uh, even they don't 